I painted it myself. So I was on a tall ladder all the way up and it's, it really does come across as extremely, you know, a, quite a height when you are seeing it, seeing the floor from above. <laughs> Why did you choose this color for your studio? It's sort of the uh, chakra color of uh, creativity and uh, wisdom. But it's um, a uh, solution towards also finding some colder temperatures because I was, I've been working with you know, warm shadow shapes and I think that very often shadow shapes want to be warm in an indoor environment. Mm -hmm but I have been sort of attracted to some cooler elements of the skin tones kind of being uh, a little bit more expressed and so having a cold uh, studio or a, a studio that reflects a lot of cooler undertones you can kind of see it in the shadow mm -hmm. the shadow is a little bit cooler yeah and you actually see it a little bit in the half tones as well do you use a black curtain to control reflected light in your portrait sessions as well yeah exactly um, and that sometimes I, I do occasionally around the, uh, the model if I don't want to have any reflection going on. But uh, I do think that a bit of ambient light is actually quite nice and attractive. Um, and I like to include a little bit of information in the shadow um, while, of course, I maintain the, the sort of atmospheric integrity of that particular area as well. Why do they tell beginning students in the atelier system to avoid situations with reflected light? Um, um, because I think uh, sort of drawing 101 mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh, learning how to simplify and uh, learning which information really matters or what kind of information truly matters versus uh, things that can be added later and the reflections in the shadow have very little merit insofar as structure goes whereas the structural definition of a shadow shape is in the contour. How did you come to know as much as you do about oil painting materials? Uh, I, uh, I invested in an artist handbook fairly early on and I give myself high five for having done that because um, it really was uh, a way to uh, to study up on each component of the materials as I was adding it to the painting process. Mm -hmm. And I find that with walnut oil and linseed oil, they're both historical oils. They have been around for hundreds of years. And so we can also see what the long-term effect of such oils are. Mm -hmm. And um, as, of course, uh, as a professional artist, I, I want my work to, to stick around <laughs> for a few decades. So I do care about the longevity of the materials that I use. Uh, so I'm quite conservative with mediums and then I rather explore just processes of paint application. Have you had any unpleasant surprises with your oil painting supplies? When I was uh, a student, I also um, I came across this alkyd based mediums, for example, and I experienced one time that the next layer, the paint was peeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, so that was a bit of a shock and surprise. Has your oil painting medium changed very much over the years? Um, I have uh, certainly um, attempted to use uh, several kinds of mediums in my career as a student and as a professional artist but I really have come back into working just with uh, linseed oil or walnut oil, or sometimes a combination of both. Um, I find that um, the medium of paint is so beautiful and just the texture of paint is so delicious. So I don't want to affect uh, the personality in a way of the body of paint by, um, by being too adventurous with the medium. Do your students make the mistake of using too much solvent in their medium? Um, not so much in, uh, in this uh, environment, I will say that uh, most students that I have come across will use a mixture of turpentine and, um, uh, and oil mixed together. But I will sometimes come across a situation where uh, a painter will have or a student will have another medium cup just with pure solvent with this idea that they have to clean their brush in that before continuing to, to paint. And that's not necessary because oil can actually clear away oil. 
that uh, I find that when I'm cleaning my brushes at the end of a painting day, uh, if I'm working with fairly small brushes, it's actually fairly easy to uh, clean the brush uh, initially by dipping it into oil and then wiping it away before washing it with oil and water. And that is certainly true for the painting process. One don't actually need to use solvent to keep the brushes clean. You can use oil for that reason. What do students confuse the most about oil painting materials? That's a really big question. What do students confuse the most? <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see, I would say that in terms of mediums, I think that it can be really confusing to start off oil painting and then have to go through the jungle of options of what mediums are out there. And there are some paint companies that I think create novelty mediums, but they sell them as uh, necessities. And so my advice to people who just begin painting is just to start with more simplified tools and really just focus on uh, the basics and getting the foundation right. And that includes not just uh, the process of drawing, but also the, the aspect of uh, which mediums or which colors to choose and et cetera. Um, I find that very often in um, workshop situations that there is an overly use, in my opinion, of solvents. And I find that people are swimming in solvents and it's not necessary and it's not uh, good for people to, uh, to inhale. There is a time and place of solvents in the artist studio. Uh, it's very handy when clearing off or cleaning brushes after a messy painting day. Um, and also within the uh, fat over lean principles is, is uh, helpful to use uh, some solvent, but it's really quite amazing how far one can push a painting with a minimum degree of solvent being employed. Do you prefer linseed oil or walnut oil? Um, when I work in a smaller scale, I often work on solid supports or linen that is adhered to solid support or I work on panels, I also work on copper. And um, I find that because those are solid supports, then walnut oil is a really good solution. Because uh, walnut oil uh, has less propensity of yellowing than linseed oil. And uh, it may also be a little bit less flexible than linseed oil. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I select walnut oil when I'm working on solid supports. But if I'm working on a larger composition where I have to uh, stretch the canvas onto stretcher bars, I anticipate a little bit of fluctuation over time. Then I will opt for a little bit more of a flexible solution. So then I will choose the uh, linseed oil. I will work with a little bit of solvent if I anticipate layering the paint in uh, several, uh, several layers. So I tend to paint quite directly. And so on average, I find that I probably complete a painting with about three to four layers, depending. Uh, but if I'm working on something that is much more involved, much more complex, then I plan out in a way that I will be working or I will anticipate that I will be working in several layers. And then I will adhere a little bit more to the fat or lean principle, where I will include a little bit of solvent in uh, early on. Uh, also, this helps to spread the paint with more ease. But when I'm working in a smaller format, I try to use just a body of paint as much as possible. And then I will maybe just use a little bit of oil to just dip the brush in and just to, to clear out some existing paint if I need to, in a way, convert that brush stroke into another area of the painting. So I add very little oil in the actual painting process. Do you oil out your painting before each session? Since I tend to push uh, each stage quite far and I tend to resolve uh, quite a bit of information, I do find it helpful to oil out so that I can see a fresh perspective of the color and the value that is actually there. So I will oil out very sparingly and very thinly. Um, I will make sure that the paint is absolutely dry so that I can be quite vigorous with even just applying my fingertip just to make sure that I spread the oil so that it becomes as thin a layer as possible. And then I will paint into that. So I tend to oil out in an area that I just need to see again the specific uh, color and value that is there. I will also oil out an area if I intend to paint into that area in that painting session. 
I tend to avoid oiling out in the areas of the light if I'm not going to repaint that area.